Arctic death, Harlem crime, and sunsets. All this and more on today's How Did This Get Made? Last looks. Hit the theme! This is your chance. Say what you want to say about that horrible movie they watched the other day. Well, it made Jason Cadu saw it on a plane. Paul took notes. Now he's taking it away. This is the last look. For the love of Pete. Hello, my extra long boxer brief buddies. I'm your host, Paul Shear, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? Last Looks, where you, the listener, get to voice your issues on Absolution, a.k.a. The Journey, colon, Absolution. Jason and I chat about some books and podcasts that we're currently loving, and I will reveal next week's movie. At the end of the show, I will also share an exclusive bonus scene from our last episode, something that we couldn't keep in, but it's still damn good. But first things first, a big shout out to Quinn for that amazing theme song. Thank you, Quinn. We love these songs. They're fantastic. And if you have a Last Looks theme song, send it to me at how did this get made at earwolf.com. Keep them short. 15 to 20 seconds is best. Now, How Did This Get Made is going on the road. I need you to be prepared. Are you coming out with second opinion songs? Because we need them. New Jersey, I want to see you there for New York Ninja. I want to see New Jersey ask questions about New York. That's really the hope. We have two shows in Boston, one with a very special How Did This Get Made all-star. We also have some great stuff lined up for D.C. and Philly and, of course, New York. If you want tickets, if you need information, go to hdtgm.com and get your tickets. I think we're almost sold out everywhere, but there are still a few available. So get in there, go do it. And I want to let you know that I'm also involved in this organization. It's called uh, Tusk, the Union Solidarity Coalition. And if you go check out our website, Tusk, that's T-U-S-C, together.com, you can click on an auction page. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit with Jason, but we are raising money for IATSE and Teamster members who are out of work uh, due to the AMPTP work stoppage. And we're just trying to raise money. And you're going to get some cool ass shit if you bid on an auction. You ever want to have me pick your fantasy football draft? I'll, I'll do it. Uh, but anyway, go there, look at it, get your bids in, and let's get into Absolution because Absolution is an interesting film. I mean, I wouldn't even really call it a movie. I would call it like a telemovie. But Danny the Wall on Discord thought the film should have been titled A Few Good Himbos. Damn, Danny! Coming at us with the himbos. I haven't heard that since the 80s. And oddly enough, himbo sounds more aggressive than the word it's replacing. Anyway, we had questions about absolution, but we didn't hear all of your questions. We might have even missed a few things. Here is your chance to set us straight. Fact check us, if you will. It is now time for corrections and omissions. Hit the theme. Hey, Paul. You guys really got it wrong. So I'm going to tell you so, corrections and omissions. Ah, great song by the great Francis Rizzo. And you know, if you've been listening to this show, you know that Francis has sent in so many great themes over the years. And before we get into corrections and omissions, I just wanted to relay a message that Francis uh, left for us on the helpline. See, Francis called in to say that he unfortunately has end-stage kidney failure. And he is doing everything he can to try to find a match for a kidney transplant. And the more potential donors he can reach, the greater chance he has to find a match. So if there are any potential donors out there listening right now, you can go to kidneyregistry.org or call 516-562-0550 or email transplantsurgery at northwell.edu and mention the name Francis Rizzo. Francis, thank you for all the great themes and we all here at how did this get made are pulling for you and we hope that you find a donor and we just we're sending you prayers now i recognize that making a transition in this moment might be tough but i'm just gonna have to lean into it and say let's go to the discord sean mcbee writes i'm pretty surprised that no one mentioned at the end our protagonists are left stranded outside in the arctic while wearing essentially tank tops (laughs) with the only shelter having just blown up and with no indication that 
any sort of rescue is coming, they will absolutely freeze to death before the day is out. Sean, holy shit. How did we not pick up on that? Our heroes are left for dead. I mean, at least at the end of the thing, at least he was wearing a jacket. Oh, brother. Wow. 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 <laughs> no one questioned that. They should have just put in the sound of a chopper or something. All right. Good eyes, Sean McBee. Danny the Wall writes, was there actually a journey somewhere? I mean, was anything to be absolved? The obvious question remains unanswered. Why is this titled The Journey Absolution? Danny, these are the simple questions that we missed. <laughs> I can't believe that we missed these. All right, let's, let, let's break it down. Absolution. What does absolution mean? A release from guilt, obligation, or punishment. I mean, I guess they got released from being under the tyranny of Richard Grieco, but from Mario Lopez, he just got there. But journey, now there is something. Journey is the act of traveling from one place to another. So Mario Lopez did journey to a place where he then freed himself from the tyranny of Richard Grieco. Anyway, I'm going to go with that. So I think the title makes perfect sense. GT75 writes, I think part of why it's so hard to figure out the plot of this film is because the protagonist, Mario Lopez, fails every step of the way. His attempt to find his friend slash fellow agent consists of just name dropping him a couple of times. So it's just kind of sheer luck that he gets imprisoned with him. He's reliant fully on Lyles, telling him what Richard Grieco's plan is. Then he can't escape without Jamie Presley randomly showing up. So even when he has to save the world from aliens, he doesn't because Grieco's efforts seem to be thwarted by just shoddy craftsmanship in building the portal. Guys, <laughs> it really is amazing. Like, it takes so much hard work to make a movie. And then you see these and you wonder, like, when I get notes on something, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a good note or, oh, that's, they're overthinking it or whatever. These movies got made. These are not scripts. Like, how? 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 Let's go to the phones. Rachel from Chicago. Hi, Paul. This is Rachel from Chicago. I'm calling about uh, Absolution. I want to talk about the timer at the end of the movie where Richard Grieco is wrestling with Jamie Presley or something, and they keep cutting between a wide shot where you can see the countdown timer and then a close-up shot of it, and they're never the same time. At one point, the wide shot shows eight seconds left, and they show a close-up of the timer, and then it's 13 seconds. And they go back to the wide shot again, and it's eight seconds. So it's just, um, you know, I don't know what was going on, maybe bad alien technology, um, but I feel like someone should have caught that. Uh, anyway, love the show. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> They couldn't even fix it. That's something that you can actually do in post. They probably just have a close-up of the stopwatch, the watch, whatever, and they can do that in post. You don't have to do that live. Why is that so dumb? That's an editor mistake there. I bet you editors are mad for this person. Kick them out of the editing guild, whoever this person is. All right, let's go to Sam from Tennessee. Hey, Paul, this is Sam from Tennessee. Listening to the episode about Absolution, the only thing that comes to mind when y'all are describing that sex thing and the underwear is the Mormons. They're they're not moving because they're just soaking. They have their their big dumpy underwear on because that's the magic underwear. So there you go. They're just soaking. They needed somebody to rock the bed for them so they could move. Oh, uh, please don't. I don't want to talk about soaking. I, I don't like soaking. One of my favorite. I listen to the uh, the Pat Bev podcast with Roan. Um, I love Pat Bev and Roan explaining soaking to Pat Bev is pretty amazing here. Actually, take a listen to him tell you what soaking is because I, I don't even want to get into it. You know what soaking is? Soaking? Yeah. Like, if I was to... Dude, I don't think you do know what it is. Can I guess? Do you want to? I, 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 I don't have a problem embarrassing myself. <laughs> okay, guess, guess. If I'm soaking like in the bathtub, uh, I'm soaking in my own tears. Dude, it's a thing that's specific to Utah. And uh, it's a thing that goes on at like BYU and Mormon schools where they're not allowed to have premarital sex. And so what they do is uh, the guy kind of takes the car and parks it in the garage and just lets it idle there. 
and it just sits there. I don't understand what you mean because you kind of tell it to me like I'm a three year old. He, a guy, a guy puts his, you know what I mean? Well, I don't. His his dick in there and just leaves it there, and it just soak. He just leaves it there to soak, and it's the thing that goes on in Utah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a real thing, dude. I did a video on it. Soaking. Soaking. So you meet a nice young lady. Hey, I like you. Let's soak. Yeah. Do they move around or like? They'll that- have their friends either jump up and down on the bed, or I talked to people who said that they'll have two mattresses standing up and their friends will wave them back and forth, but they're not doing the action. Moving, right. So they're the, they can, they're the ones that are just soaking there. Has anyone ever got pregnant? I'm sure they have. Yeah. I'm sure they have. That's, that's wild. Isn't that wild, but dude? We didn't have sex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They could be like, in the eyes of God, I'm still a virgin. Thank you, Roan. Thank you, Pat Bev. And there you go. All right. Finally, Morgan from Chicago. What do we got, Morgan? Hey, Paul. This is Morgan in Chicago. Um, I was just calling with a little thing about uh, absolution or, I guess, the journey absolution. So at a minute or at an hour and 29 minutes and 40 seconds, about that time, uh, the scene where Mario Lopez and Jamie Priestley are running away from the explosion. If you look at the very bottom of the screen, you'll notice that the track marks in the snow are already laid down. And then as they're running on the snow, it like fills in the track marks, almost like they had reversed the footage. Um, but they're very clearly running towards, uh, towards us. So I'm really not too sure what's happening there. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts and see uh, if you had any idea what was going on there. All right, cool. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, We did delete a portion of the show where we did talk about the snow. I I thought it was like potato in a box kind of shavings. Um, But Scott, our producer, he thinks the footprints were already there due to earlier takes and they shot them and just kind of too lazy to smooth over the footprints after every take. And honestly, it's it's not like they're like disappearing as they run over them. It's just like the clouds of dust of like whatever that is, if it's flour or something. Look, shoddy filmmaking is the answer. Uh, that's That's all. I mean, if you were to tie all these questions together, the answer would be, Oh, because of shoddy filmmaking. Back to the Discord, Rocket Wesker writes, During the final showdown, Greco activated the teleporter to escape from Earth? Why didn't he just use the teleporter to send his people to Earth, overwhelming Mario Lopez with the alien army and starting the invasion? I mean, that would solve all of Greco's problems, but by doing the opposite, he would have taken Jamie Presley to his dying home planet and left the only device that can transport the alien army to Earth for the humans to destroy? Oh my God. First of all, Rocket Wesker. <laughs> Again, good eyes. I, I didn't even get that his planet was dying. And yes, they should be coming through. I, I thought maybe it was a transference. Like he needed some human DNA to go back there. It was like E.T. needed to bring a plant. Did E.T. need to bring a plant back to his planet or was his planet? I think his planet was doing fine. I think in the book or like a sequel, his planet was dying. But that's just that. I mean, technically, that's fan fiction. Why do I know about E.T. fan fiction? I don't even think it's E.T. fan fiction. I think I read a book that Steven Spielberg, like said, was officially an E.T. sequel. <sighs> Why do I know so much about E.T.? I mean, because it's a great movie. It's, it's a solid movie. I'll tell you, E.T., don't knock it. I didn't watch it for years. I rewatched it. I was like, it's fucking good. I mean, everything Steven Spielberg makes is like the worst. Spielberg is really good. Like I rewatched uh crystal skull and maybe it's just years of being battered by these you know new sequels and and new people and bad cgi that it didn't hit me as hard this time i mean the first 40 minutes are pretty good there are some things that are bad i talk about this a little bit on my letterbox but uh shia labeouf Justin for Shia. He's good in that. He is actually good. The CGI is terrible. Like, why would they take an Indiana Jones movie and then, like, really just put it on green screens? It, it's so schlocky, and I think that that's what they were going for. Anyway, in that movie, which is bad, but not as bad as I remember it, it's still really good. Spielberg, on the movies that you don't love, still have, like, great sequences. And I would say the first 40 minutes is pretty flawless in that one. Okay. Spoon Rise writes, just a brief correction to the Olive Garden Gorilla marketing team. Contrary to Sinclair shouting out, you can't get that dressing. It's a secret. In what was no doubt a yes and and heightening fugue state, you actually can buy 
<laughs> the Olive Garden salad dressing at Costco. Okay, wow. Uh, hashtag make salads unhealthy somehow. Hashtag MSUS. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, to Olive Garden. Sneak it in here ad free. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to go to, I'm a Costco member. I'm going to go there and buy that salad dressing. It's good. Okay. And lastly, this is something that was important. In our last corrections and omissions, I told Dr. Guts 1003 he was incorrect for suggesting that there still should have been sunlight out when Jane Lynch leaves her house around 9, 9 30 p.m. And I said, fact check me. People, make sure I'm right. And by the way, I've been actually watching this. I was on vacation. I was watching this. But anyway, Corgi Herder stepped up to the plate with actual real facts. Corgi Herder writes, this is for Paul and his sunlight question. Your latitude or how close you are to the equator changes when the sun sets. This is due to the axle tilt. The earth doesn't spin perfectly up and down. It's tilted. So sometimes the North Pole is pointed at the sun and sometimes away. So Paul was correct in saying that sunlight depends on where you live. Yes. That's why the poles get endless nights in the winter. The sunset for the summer solstice in L.A is listed at 8.08 p.m. By contrast, for Seattle, it's an hour later. There we go. Now, look, so many great corrections and omissions. I, do I want to give it to Corgi Herder for proving me right? Of course I do. I want to say you're the winner this week, but technically it's not a correction and omission for this week's movie. But let me tell you, you have my vote. Then I want to go to Spoon Rise because you snuck in a little ad for Costco and Olive Garden. But the truth is, the real truth is there are so many great... <laughs> questions here. So many things going on. But to me, I really believe that Sean McBee asked the question that was the most obvious question that no one answered. How are these people going to survive in the Arctic? And you know what, Sean McBee, you are the winner and you get this amazing song from Francis Day. Hit it! All right, if you want to submit uh, an alt movie tagline or maybe a new title for a movie that we do, every week we're going to pull one of those from the Discord. You can go to our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or call us at 619-PAUL-ASK. Now, uh, coming up, Jason and I are going to chat about all the things that we are currently into. We're going to reveal next week's movie. And at the end of the show, I will share an exclusive deleted scene from our Absolution episode. So, stick around. People... Every Monday, we are re-releasing older episodes back into the rotation because Stitcher Premium is no longer. We don't have a place you can access our back catalog. We are working on a fix. It's not going to be soon, but we're figuring it out. And in the meantime, what we're going to be doing is asking you for suggestions about what to re-release on Mondays, matinee Mondays. But the next two weeks, we got it covered because The Meg is out and we re-released The Meg One with all-stars Nicole Byer and Adam Scott. And next week... Because another How Did This Get Made All-Star, Seth Rogen, has made a genius, amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. We're going to go back to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 with Adam Pally. So keep on checking out these replays of classic episodes every Monday. And let's get into Just Chat. We're going to do Just Chat a little bit differently. We do want you guys to be calling us at 619 paul Ask because um, as long as the strike goes on, we're not going to be talking about streamers. We're not going to be promoting different things. We're going to try to keep it uh, off center. So we want to hear your questions. We want to get into your piece of advice. So Jason and I will be diving into that a little bit more. Just wanted to give you a heads up. The phone lines are open. They're always open. But now, with that out of the way, let's get into just chatting. Seth Chatfield, take it away. Is it this? Or could it be that? A little swing of the cane, a little tip of the hat. No, it's Jason and Paul. Jason, I saw you recently just got back from Washington, D.C. doing some improv. Yes, Paul. I was at the Kennedy Center where I was doing an improv show. Uh, I was meant to do a week's worth of shows. And on night three, I got COVID again on the road and was again, once again, stuck in a hotel with COVID for a week, just out of my entire mind. Now, wait, let me ask you a question about this. Were there any babies in that Kennedy Center audience? Only the baby that is Anthony Atamanik, who (laughs) fully gave me COVID. I know it. 
I know How? it because he was sick. He was sick. Mm. And then the next day he was out with COVID. Then the next day Neil Casey was out with COVID. And then the next day I got COVID. So okay. between the two of those guys who I was doing shows with, that's got to be how I got it. Or we were all exposed at the same time, and I just was the last person who developed the symptomatic case of it. Well, I have to say that I'm glad that you got COVID before we go out on the road for how did this get made? I feel like yes, I'm not, I, that was the only silver line, you know, was that I can now be f- pretty carefree on this tour. Right, we just have. to be a little, it, it's a quick tour. We'll be out there next week. Make sure you get your tickets. Tickets are still available. We're almost sold out everywhere. Uh, we have a surprise coming to you the first night in Boston, which we won't tell you yet. And we also have a surprise coming to you in New Jersey. We think, we think, but, that's a maybe. Say, we'll see. A maybe. That's a maybe. Uh, I will say, though, when you talk about Anthony Atomic, uh, I think about his brand new podcast, which I don't know if you've heard it yet. It's I great. have. I've only heard one episode. I heard the John Gemberling episode, okay. which is fantastic. I did an episode, too. I did his first episode. We recorded it a while ago. And the whole idea is, how would you survive something insane? Our, our Premise something was, that you fear. Something that you fear. What if it came true? Right. right. So ours was, well, mine was not positioned to me like that. I was oh, just okay. given, what would you A do prompt? if your car I see. skidded off into the road and into like a river or a body of water? What would you do? And we and he was testing me on what I thought I would do. And we had a great conversation about it. So much so that after our conversation, I did buy one of those um, uh, window breakers, which I have already in my car. I already have one in my car, but this one goes around my visor because I was realizing, oh, my window breaker is low. Uh I have to go dig for it. This would be really smart. I would want one to cut my seatbelt and break the window right by my head. I I now travel with one. Wow. So I have one in my little kit that has like a little tiny roll of duct tape, a little, like I've got one of those now just, so if I'm in a rental car, wow. I have one of those things. That's probably even smarter. Because, yes, because I'm, I don't know when this shit's gonna yeah. go down. So I now, tr- I, I'll bring you one, cause I have I extras, I bought like and five of them. And you can get that through airport security. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I tried to bring some, I, I, I tried mean, to bring some hot sauce back. I was so bummed. Jason, I, I gotta tell you, I, I, oh, I no. went on this, I went on this trip uh, with, I think you know her, June, my wife. And we were on this small island in the West Indies. Uh, it was an amazing trip. The hotel that we were staying at is known for their hot sauce. This chef at the hotel makes okay. her own hot sauce. And you can order it, whatever. It's it's It has become a bigger thing. Yes, but it's a thing. I was there. The hot sauce is great. I bought a small bottle of her hot sauce. So happy to have it. Now, coming back from the West Indies, you have to go through Miami, or we did, and then uh, get another flight to go to wherever you're going. What happened was our flight got delayed. So I got it after I went through security. I, you know, So I bought the hot sauce at the duty-free shop because yeah. I was like, I'm going to get this. This is great. But then I had to go sure. back through security, and they confiscated my fucking hot sauce. I was so bummed. I was halfway there. That's it was really and infuriating. I and they did it in the place where you have to re-enter the airport via like when you go through customs, you go get your bags, and then you have like exit to the outside world or exit back to the airport to get a connecting flight. And when you go back to the airport, you right. have to still go through the security machines. So I had not left an airport, but yet it was confiscated. It was, and I was trying That's to explain to them, but I was like, but I bought it at the duty free shop. That's the whole idea in the airport. I'm still in the, in airport. the airport. Yeah. No. It was really That's frustrating. It was maddening. really frustrating. That's it was maddening. I hate when the when they basically yeah. don't play by the rules. You know what I mean? It's like, listen, I'm doing this the way you want me right. to. I, I bought it, it in the, the duty way- free yes. store. Yes. After I did, and you're telling me that your system now can strip this away from me? That's a that seems like it, it, some sort of racketeering. That you know, like like that seems like you a want that hot sauce. Like you're getting you're getting. It was yeah, hilarious yeah, exactly. though because I couldn't. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty good traveler, and I couldn't figure out why my bag was being stopped. And they're like, you have liquid in there. Yeah, and I was like, 
it's hot sauce. And to tell someone I have hot sauce in my bag, I mean, I know Hillary Clinton says it all the time and says yeah. Beyonce, but uh, besides the two of exactly. them, I, it, was, it did feel like the best thing to say that, no, 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 that, that's hot sauce. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Uh, don't guys no don't worry guys it's oh, just and i'll tell you sauce. one other thing that i hated about this travel day that was so upsetting our connecting flight to get us from miami back to where we needed to go uh sat on the tarmac for two hours without air conditioning yeah that happened to me oh, trying God. to leave and the woman DC. next to me ate three hot dogs Three no. Nathan, Nathan hot dogs. No, Paul. And she was an older no. lady. Who, and I That's was like, no, allowed. no, no. And I was just trying to be kind because she was older and I wanted to just be sweet. But three. And so for the rest of the plane, well, I mean, was we were there and I was, it was, it never went away. The smell never dissipated. And then here's insult oh. to injury. I was like, at least I'll be home soon. Uh, after two hours of being on the tarmac, <laughs> we get this voice over the intercom. Oh. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so due to FAA regulations, uh, we've reached our 12-hour shift. So we have to go back to the airport now, and uh, we're going to delay this flight. <laughs> no. We were on the tarmac. That's... We got to go I back. That. And they... Ugh. That's... Come on we went now. No. Back. No. We went that's back. No. That's and then, a hard you know, no. I was interested. I said, oh, is there a, a travel voucher for food or something? They said, no. Flight's not canceled. It's just delayed. It's like, so my eight o'clock flight, which now it's 1230 at night, is delayed until seven in the morning. So for 12, like, they're, yeah, no, you oh only get God. a food voucher if it's canceled. So I was like, so I got to fend for myself for this next seven hours. And then that flight was then pushed from 930 then to 1230. What? Uh, it was so real struggling. So did you have struggling. to stay in the airport that whole time? No, no, no. I'm with okay. my wife who, my wife was like, we're, st- I, I yeah. said. Oh, we can manage seven hours. I mean, it's not going to be that big. Because if we get to the hotel, by the time we check yeah. in, it's going to be like one one thirty. Then we're going to have to leave at like 5. Like, yeah. eh, we should just stay in the airport. And she's like, I want a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't argue with that. Uh, and, and she was right. She was right. It was oh, better yeah. to be in a hotel for a, a few hours than just be uncomfortably laying somewhere oh, in yeah. the Miami airport. Ugh, boy. But anyway, I did get to do some good reading while I was on my trip. And I- Oh, yeah? What'd you read? Oh, my gosh. I read this book called uh, Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. Okay, sure. He won the Pulitzer for the Underground Railroad, and this is his crime novel. I think you would actually love it. It's, yep. It okay. is a fact-based fiction. It's about a, a small furniture dealer in Harlem in the 50s and 60s, and he kind of has a toe in crime. Not that he commits crimes, but he interacts with elements or like sure it's a little shady it's a, but it's the book is three short stories of capers that this guy is involved in and the new book just came out this week it's about him trying to get jackson five tickets for his daughter wait same character it's another same character. installment yeah, of this so, ca- oh cool okay great yeah so and he's written a ton of books colson whitehead this is the first time i believe He's revisited a, a yeah. character. Like, this is Ooh, like, that's great. this is yes. his Bosch. This is his Bosch, or he, yes, yes, exactly. And the new one is called Crook Manifesto. Crook great. Manifesto. Oh, so I'll, I'll, I just I'll, got that. I'll get both of these. Oh, that's a great one. But uh, Harlem Shuffle is very akin to the stuff we talk about with Ed Brubaker and stuff. It's a, it's a real. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just love the tone and the style of it. He's a great writer. And oh, that's great. Really oh, I like that. I was going to recommend a book to you yeah. that I was listening to and really enjoying, only to look at it and see that you had blurbed it, Ooh. Which, which is the Last Action Heroes book. Dude, this is the book I've been loving. Yes. You are blurbed uh, on the book, right? Yes, I am. I, cause because I, I the... was like, oh, I got to tell Paul about this book because I'm listening to the audiobook and I yeah. looked up, looked it up on Audible to get make sure I knew all the information. Yeah. And you're first up on like the quotes list. I... And I was like, oh, Sheer already knows about this. I love this I heard book. about it from, uh, I'll Which give props I gave to the Action Boys podcast. The rec- um, gave to us... them. Yep. Great. So they've been they've been listening to it and talking about it on their podcast. So I started listening to it. And it is a fantastic peek behind the curtain of the 80s and 90s it starts with like Hollywood Stallone action boom the and Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger and goes all the way yes, through exactly. like the end of Seagal Steven it's, Seagal oh, it's so and, fun the yep, stories exactly. are so 
fucking funny. And it's written in such a conversational way. Like I actually found myself slowing down reading it because I just enjoyed it so much. I was like, oh, these are fun. I just want to like, but like listening to Chuck yeah. Norris and I bought, uh, I bought a Chuck Norris movie. I bought Code of Silence because I wanted to like, cause, because of this. Yeah. Oh, that's it's funny. Really good. It's great. You know, I'm really enjoy. It's a, it's also a very good audio book. Bronson Pinchot oh, reads him. the audio book. Um, it's so it's, and it's very digestible. Great, you know, behind the scenes stories of the makings of, uh, uh, movies that we've talked about on this podcast, well, but then yes. also like all these movies that are so baked into like our life, you know, all these from the Jean-Claude Van Dams to like we said, Schwarzenegger and Dolph Lundgren and Seagal and Chuck Norris, all of it them. It really is interesting because you get like, I actually have such a appreciation for Lundgren now. I mean, I've always, I think he is, uh, I don't know. It, it, I think that people have no ego about it besides Stallone. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Uh, so everyone talks pretty openly. Um, I will tell you that- yeah. Another kind of behind the scenes podcast like this that I think you and I both love, which now has kind of become a little bit more ensconced as an official podcast, is the Light the Fuse podcast, which is the two uh, these two guys, great guys, basically tackle all the Mission Impossible movies, and oh, wow. they go, oh you, oh Jason, let huh. me open your mind to this. They've done like three hundred episodes on the Mission Impossible movies. What and oh. It, light, okay. light the fuse, you're saying? Okay, light the fuse. On. They've now become the official podcast of Mission Impossible. Oh, okay, got it. But got it. Um, it is basically these two guys who love, love Mission Impossible. It's uh, Drew Taylor, who is a reporter for The Rap. He wrote for New York Times, Vulture, Vanity Fair, The Playlist, Collider, so we know him. Charles yep. Hood, who is a writer-director who co-wrote Night Owls. You know, and he's hmm. great, right? So two two guys who just love these movies yeah they go in exacting detail they will interview everybody from special effects coordinators to people who wrote scripts who weren't credited on the yeah. movie yeah, to yeah, yeah they go deep on everyone and you hear these amazing stories wow. um and they they get chris mcquarrie on there which by the way if you're a fan empire podcast just released yeah those i've bonus. listened to the empire podcast did you listen to the brand new great. one the uh, no i haven't because i still haven't seen the movie Oh, okay, okay. Well, then, uh, but I, won't but I will. Yeah, I, I I will just say if you are a Mission Impossible fan, I just recently watched them. These guys are fantastic. They're a little independent podcast. They have uh, that now is kind of getting a lot more attention. But they they go deep in a way that just because they are critics yeah. and filmmakers, they uncover things in such a, a, a great way. I, I I love it. You have to dig for some of the old episodes now, but you can. Okay. They're they're, yeah, they're still out. I'll there. check that out. Oh, that yeah. sounds great. Excellent. I'll throw in a couple of other podcasts just since we're talking yeah. about podcasts. I've been listening to a bunch of um, pretty good music podcasts. Like I love Dissect and Song Exploder, yeah. Cocaine and Rhinestones, but a couple of, and I've mentioned Object of Sound before, which is great, but there's one called One by Willie okay. that every episode is about, is people talking about Willie Nelson songs. Whoa. Or other other songs that are impactful, but through the through a, a Willie Nelson lens. Also, a, an epi, a, a podcast called Strong Songs is a guy who like breaks down all of the kind of theory and lyrics behind behind a single song and talks about it and deconstructs it. And it's and it's so far great. I've only listened to a handful of episodes. One of which was about Joni Mitchell's "Help Me." Um, so oh, it was wow. great. To hear he talks about all the musicians who were on it, and then he himself is a musician, so he'll break down like the guitar line or the why this interesting drum beat is why you know it's very it's it's both technical but also like a, a really interesting uh, examination of an entire song for an episode, and they're a blast. Oh, I love that, and you know we talked about Joni Mitchell for a long time on one of the last uh, last looks we did, and that album from the Newport Festival finally has been released, yes. like a remastered or just a a mastered version. Not so you don't have to watch it on YouTube, yeah. uh, which I am excited about. But as you and I shared, more excited to see the one that we went to. Oh my God, I'm so excited for that. I will also shout out. You were also on a podcast that I've been listening to a lot lately, which is the Raj Tapes, which is oh, Ben Rogers is yes. Ben Rogers from the Action Boys, Lower Decks writer, old UCB guy, really funny, super funny dude. Has a great podcast, a really great podcast where well, it is a it's a. Go I ahead. was going to say he he drives around with a van, yeah, full of uh, movies that you've never really seen that you can't get anywhere. 
Yep, like and, unique, one of a kind movies. Yes, and you have and to invite watch people it. to come and talk. And and it's a movie. It's a if you like this show, I think you will love the Raj tapes. And that's R O D G E tapes. Raj. And it's he's got great guests, but he also it it's funny, but it's also like in the inside baseball world of like the Quentin Tarantino podcast, you know, video archives. That these are movies yep. that you don't know about, and I. I think it will make you just be searching eBay up at night to try to find yeah, all these Yeah, he's turning movies. you on to stuff that's really good. I'll also throw out Drifting Off with Joe Pera. Joe oh, Pera's yes. podcast is absolutely stunning. Uh, so far, only six episodes, but every one of them a home run. Can't oh, recommend it enough. That. What I was going to ask you about as well was, you know, obviously we are on strike right now as, as actors yes. and writers. I've been involved with this organization that I help found called Tusk, which is the Union Solidarity Coalition. And we have uh, done some events. We raised like $195,000 uh, in one of our events. And Incredible. now we're doing this celebrity auction, which is really fun. We have two. Uh, we're wrapping up one and we're going off and doing another one as well. But you can do really fun stuff like I will pick your fantasy draft order. Brett Gelman will uh, eat corn dogs with you. Oh, my God. June will take a hike with you. Just to take a hike. Incredible. You can Incredible. have lunch with Justin Halpern, who is the uh, showrunner of Abbott Elementary and the co-creator of Harley Quinn. There are just great packages in there. But the one that is really fun, if you're a Woody Harrelson fan and, and you like to smoke, uh, you can just smoke weed with Woody. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you can hang out at his dispensary for an hour and just, you know, get it done. Uh, also, uh, Broad City's dress and stuff. If you go to uh, Tusk Together, that's T-U-S-C together.com, you can just go to the auction. You can see what we got going on. And like I said, that auction's ending in a little bit. And then we're starting even a bigger auction with, I mean, Jason, Meg Gyllenhaal is going to be doing a Zoom with somebody. Wow. Just, just she'll, and she, I've been talking with her. She'll talk to you about anything. And Great. you got like Weird Al Yankovic and Daniel Radcliffe signing shirts. We got exclusive. The two Weird Al's. The two Al's. My two, fa my two favorite. They can call me Al's. Oh, my gosh. I got to remake that video. Uh, <laughs> that, that would be funny. <laughs> uh, and, and oddly late. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, so... Yeah, but I mean that's that's what I've been up to. I've been that's able incredible. To, yeah, I I want to bid on some of these things. Yeah, you'll, there's some cool stuff. The one that I help put together that I love is I'm a big fan of Chelsea Devantes's uh, uh, Celebrity Book Club, where she only talks about celebrity autobiographies. It's a great it's a great podcast because uh, I read a lot of those. And what <laughs> I did was I reached out to so many of our friends from Tig Notaro to Danny Pellegrino, John Bowie, Whitney Cummings, Mindy Kaling, uh, Jesse Klein, Sarah Silverman, uh, Betty Gilpin, Brian Lee O'Malley, so many people, Casey Wilson, uh, and had them autograph their books. So you're going to get like 12 autograph books and you're going to get a year subscription to her podcast, which is, I just love it. I, I think it's Ooh, like a great, great gift. Yeah. Start your little celebrity uh, library. I love that. That's incredible. Yeah, so fun stuff all around. And you signed all. I signed them all. Yeah, I, the, the funniest Smart. thing is like I asked, uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, <laughs> I asked Judy Greer, I was like, Judy, can you sign a book? And she's like, sure. And then she wrote back to me. She's like, Paul, I don't, can't find my book. She's oh, like, that's so, so funny. What I did was she got a, a copy of Kathleen Turner's book, signed it, and put a twenty dollar uh, gift card in there for Starbucks. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. That's so, very funny. Yeah, I love it's that. really great. Uh, I really love it. <laughs> and I'm going to just shout out as this trip was a hellish nightmare. I will be so happy. Oof. And I was so happy to have my Tom Bin bag, my big bag, my like the one that doesn't have that Which many one, pockets. Which one, your cynic? Oh, that no, doesn't this have any pockets? Is, this is like, it only has pockets at the top. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a it's, shadow guide pack is my guess. Okay. The, yeah. It's, I, a, it's a bucket with a lid at the top. Yes. Yes. Shadow Guide Pack, I okay. believe is what you're just saying. And uh, that's where I forget the names of these things. But I got to tell you, that thing came in so handy because... That, that's my main backpack when I'm traveling. Okay. It, that's yeah, a beast. Be because it's it holds a lot. I miss the pockets, but then yes. doing your job, which is uh, I get the little pouches, pouches and then yep. you're good to go. Oh, yeah. Got to get your pouches going. You got to get your pouch game going. I use the yeah, thing that I you gave me for... Uh, my birthday, a little uh, a mini packer, and I put all my ele my electronics fit in there perfectly. Oh yeah, that's great. That's the best. Perfect. Oh, nothing makes me happy. Thank goodness to Tom Bin for that because I felt like I never was overwhelmed because I was trying to travel light. June made fun of me my entire trip because I travel with 
too small of a carry-on. Like, she travels with this monster beast, and I'm always like, I can't fit anything in my carry-on. You mean the roller bag or your backpack? My roller bag. And, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, and she And when she finally saw it, she's like, that's way too small. I go, it's regulation. She's like, you don't have to do regulation. Oh, boy. and uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm learning. I'm learning how to get a roller bag. But that, uh, I have a small version of an away bag that was not. Uh, it was very tough. Oh yeah, that's tough. Though the, the small version of those, which is basically the regular in like Europe and some other countries, that's the only uh, size. Right, is the small bag. That's all you can take on a plane. Yeah, it's only it- really here domestically that you can that you can have like the cabin plus. Or whatever it's called, you know, yeah. it's a little bit bigger. Um, Jeez, yeah, otherwise, so they're going to make you check it. So big. Her bag is so big. <laughs> she's, and, you know, she's all excited about it. I can fit everything in this bag. I'm like, yeah, because it's a fucking full suitcase. That's why yeah, I can fit everything too in. much. Too heavy. All right. Well, Jason, great to chat with you. Uh, we'll be back. We're going to be on Can't tour. Wait, Paul. Head Can't out wait. to howdidthisgetmade.com, hdtgm.com to see the movies that we're doing. Come see us. We're We're going... We're traveling around on the East Coast. We're not going far. You could go see two shows in Boston. Get on a train. Go see two shows in New York. Get on a, another uh, train. Go see us in Philly. We're we're a train tour. This is, these are these. You could you could travel with us like you are following the Amen. dead on this one or a fish because these shows are close to each other. So you know, get tickets. Get tickets for multiple cities. Check them out. Come on, everybody. And Come I'll tell you this much. Us. I am aware that people might do that. So I am actually trying to keep it a little bit different. Things that the people can see different things every night. So, and I have heard and have it on good authority that the air conditioning at the Chevalier is uh, now, now working. That's what we needed to hear. All right. That's the info that I've been waiting to hear. <laughs> All right, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks for joining me, Jason. This is Just Chat. Now that we got Absolution out of the way, let's talk about next week's movie. Oh, boy, this is great. We're going from a sci-fi flop to an Al Pacino cop. (laughs) That's right. Next week, we are watching the 2017 crime mystery Hangman, starring Al Pacino, Carl Urban, and Brittany Snow. Boy, uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, A short breakdown of the plot is simply this. A homicide detective brings his partner out of retirement to help catch a serial killer whose crimes are based on... You guess it. The children's game. Hangman. Rotten Tomatoes gives this film a 4% score on the tomato meter. And Craig D. Lindsay from The Village Voice says, You may not take a single frame of this movie seriously, especially whenever Pacino is shuffling around, waving a gun, and talking like he's desperately in need of a mint julep. Oh, people. Listen to this trailer. We're not going to let you down. We got a serial killer. You noticed anything out of the ordinary? There's a letter carved in our chest. Game of hangman. He's killed four people in four days, one every 24 hours. He doesn't stop. That's part of the game. Catching by the game board, he's gonna kill seven more people. Because of me, this whole game is taking place. We're gonna find this guy. All right, we are almost to the end of this episode, but before we go, check out this bonus scene from our Absolution show where we answer a couple of extra audience questions. Um, all right, so uh, your name, your verb, best Pete's sake, and your question. Okay, my name is Christy, <sighs> for Pete's sake. Oh, I like it. Uh, I'm surprised that you guys uh, didn't clock that, and maybe it's only listed on IMDb, it's right. not actually in the movie, that Mario Lopez's character's full name is Ryan Murphy. Yes, I actually have a picture of that. His name is Ryan Murphy. When he signs in, it's Ryan Murphy. Uh... I, did, I did clock it, actually. I just haven't <laughs> shared it. I thought I we, did we really left show. her out in the cold for that one. I thought that was a... I had the I picture. I thought pulled. it was Ryan Murphy. <laughs> All right, your name and uh, your best Pete's sake and your question. Uh, my name's Mike. Uh, for the love of Pete! Right. Uh, my question is, do you think that the casting director thought that the Christian from Clueless would be a, would be a perfect military man? You know, I was wondering where he was Who from, and I didn't Google it, but yeah, somewhere. Christian from Clueless. Like, <clears throat> he... Christian from Clueless. Who does he play in Clueless? Oh, that's Dallas? Okay. Yeah, that's the one who, like, Dallas. loves... Yeah. Oh, of course. So he's gay in Clueless. And she initially has her crush on him. Right. 
He's wonderful. You know. He's great. He's great. I did like him in this. I, I liked him a lot. Love I mean, Dallas. I don't think he's Z team material. <laughs> well, he what dies I will, on the wheel. I mean, what I will say about this movie too, and I always feel this as someone who is not a cut, you know, abcentric person. Paul, don't like, talk about yourself. Come though, on, right? Paul, you take care of me. Yeah, yeah you take care. You take great care of my friends. What are you talking about? Don't get me what wrong. What is the nature of this relationship? Come on, you take such good care Don't of Don't get me wrong. I take care of my body. I enjoy my body, but I'll tell you this. I, I, I always feel for the two or three people who are a little bit more deep background who aren't as cut, and it's always like, cut, cut, cut. And it's this one guy is like, hi. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Even, even if... That person's in good shape. You don't look like you just. There's. This, I noticed you. Look, you. It was yeah, hard. It's yeah, upsetting. It was, it's yeah. like, and there's a, that hard. one guy who really like in that standing room. He's like belly is out a little bit more. The than belly. belly. I did notice. Well, he the also belly. had kind of a farmer's tan. Yes. You know, I'd love to yeah. give him a little How? spray tan. Think about it. Yeah. How? Wow. <laughs> they make a point to say the sun doesn't come out. What? Okay. So when I. When Jessica and I said we are in bad, we were this movie put us in bad moods. I really think it was also because there's not any natural light in the movie. Yes, and yes, you spend. You're right. I started to feel crazy. I was like, it's get me all out of this overheads, it, all fluorescence. It felt. It gave me a headache. And me too. Maybe also just the fact like, that it was oh, shot like on a- videotape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you no, know, I feel like it was shot like on the stages next door to Save by the Bell. I felt like yeah. Mario was like, shit, I got to go do a sex scene. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Start. <laughs> he was like doing Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off style. So good. Thank you for coming out to Largo. We'll see you on the How Did This Get Made summer tour. It's a this week, people. Come out. Come out with your second opinions. Come out with your questions. We cannot wait. Come out in costume. Come out in costume. All right. Anyway, uh, remember, if you like the show, rate, review it. Tell your friends about it. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, make sure you are following us. I don't mean to shout, but I am. Visit us on social media at HDTGM. A big thank you to our producers, Scott Sani and Molly Reynolds, our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and Jess Cisneros, who makes our amazing social media videos. We will see you next week for... Hangman!